like this. I like that Zoom uh, lets you know that it's being recorded now. So um, maybe uh, most of you know me, or uh, I, I don't know how um, everybody got the information about this meeting. Maybe you got it in the Sophia Facebook group or the transpersonal student community or exploring transpersonal or maybe Steven or Sophia University sent out an email. We tried to um, market this as much as possible to get the transpersonal students to be interested <coughs> and working together in their and professional, professional interests interest in, uh, in uh, developing uh, themselves in that way. So um, that, that is what we're here for. Um, I am Mr. Travis Gray. Uh, I am a transpersonalist like, like everyone else here, I'm sure. And uh, I have been with Sophia University for eight years. So I was in the pioneer group of the bachelor's completion program. Uh, I completed the master's degree in counseling psychology. I have a lot of experience in counseling psychology. And now I'm in the um, uh, dissertation phase of my, uh, of my PhD program. And um, I just had a meeting with uh, the chair of my program and pretty soon I'll have that proposal meeting. So I'm uh, on my way to candidacy. I, I heard that that was a thing. Um, so I'm pretty, uh, pretty happy about that, I guess. But uh, I'm trying to finish that <laughs> PhD also. So, um, so yeah, the, that's where I'm at. That's who I am. And uh, I, I'd like us to just like maybe go around the room and, uh, and maybe say uh, your name. Uh, we, we always like to know where you're, where you're checking in from. And then uh, maybe also uh, what called you, maybe a little, little synopsis for, for everybody. Some, uh, sometimes it's a big story, but uh, what called you to transpersonal psychology? I would love to know some of that. So maybe uh, starting off with a Shari. Hi, um, my name is Shari Harrison. It doesn't, there's no H in the, in the name, but um, it's pronounced Shari, it's Hungarian. And I am here from Ashland, Oregon, recently transplanted from the Bay Area um, of California. And um, that is a really big question, Travis. <laughs> what brought you to transpersonal? Well, my entire life, my entire life <laughs> brought me to transpersonal. Um, but I do think in the very end, I mean, I've been studying spirituality and religion and various things for decades, but um, I found out about Sophia from my friend, my best friend, Mimi Sirfoss, who um, just yeah, graduated from the MITP program. Yeah. So, and when I saw the course descriptions, I was like, I must do that program. Yeah. And I'm about um, a year in right now. It is, is Mimi in Oregon? She's in Washington, right? She's in Washington. Yeah. We both, we knew each other in California and then she moved to Washington and I moved to Ashland. Yeah. Um, yeah. And she's in the PhD program now. Yep. 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 M M Mimi's awesome. Uh, Dorte, or you, you know, Dorte? Yes, yes, I know Dorte as well. Yeah. Great. Great. Well, very nice to have you. Um, how about, uh, how about Lisa? You, you just jumped in and you're, and you're already on the spot. Uh, so uh, maybe your, your name, uh, where you're calling in from and what, what, uh, what called you to transpersonal psychology? <laughs> All right, so I'm uh, here near the Chicago, Illinois area and suburb. And I graduated in 2018, December of 2018 from the program, uh, master's program. And what called me to transpersonal? Well, for 10 years, my colleagues kept telling me to do something else. <laughs> and my inner knowing kept saying, I don't like that. I don't want to do that. So they kept saying, no, you have to do this. And I said, no, I don't. So I chose what I wanted to chose uh, for myself. And, um, and I was, absolutely loved the program. It fulfilled all of the pieces that I really thought that I was desiring in my master's degree. And although my institution doesn't recognize it as meaning anything, and it did nothing to um, move me forward in my career at my current position, it doesn't matter because I love what it did for me. And that's all that matters. <laughs> that's awesome. That's, that's awesome. my little story. <laughs> that, that's beautiful. Um, I, I, I once met this person in uh, Mexico City 
who was, um, do, she got her counseling psychology degree. And um, in Mexico, a lot of people don't really go to therapy. She, she doesn't, ha- there's not a lot of opportunity for her to be a therapist in Mexico. And um, she did it just because she loved it, just because she really enjoyed the program. Um, so that's, that's really cool. Uh, thank you, Lisa. Yeah. Uh, how long have we known each other, Lisa? Uh, how, how long have I known you? So like I said, I graduated in 2018. I think you and I probably met in... Um, Did we meet at an intensive or on campus? At the, um, a retreat, my, one of the retreats that I was at. Yeah, yeah. Very, yeah. Cool, very cool, very yeah. cool. Um, how about uh, Numbaya? Numbia, Numbia, Numbia? Numbia. Numbia. Thank you. No, um, I was referred to the school from CIS. And actually, I'm I'm still completing my BA um, for you know finishing up at Sophia, awesome. so I'll be re-enrolling. But I wanted to still stay connected, so I wanted to make sure I took it. And I'm in private practice. I specialize in men's health. I'm in men's wellness. Um, over fifty, and I have two locations in San Jose and Castro Valley. And I my main thing for it now is to help I do with tobacco treatment. Um, and performance anxiety. So it would be on the counseling and, you know, stretch therapy. So I was connecting all of it together um, for men's health and help them to get, stay healthy, coach them if they have to go to the doctor, get tested, those type of things. So I do well, I'm, I'm thankful. So I want to, now with, with the Sophia, what I'll do is be able to add the, the HMO processing. So that was one of the key things I can so my class can use their health insurance. I do HSA in military right now, but um, this will help with that. That's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, are you connected with uh, some uh, more students at CIS as well? Um, not anymore. Not anymore. But I used to, but, but CIS transfer, I was at CIS and they recommended that I um, come to Sophia. And that's how I found out about Sophia. Okay, very, very cool, very cool. Um, it, so uh, the, the reason I asked that question is because uh, we would we would like to uh, include um, all of people that are interested in transpersonal scholarship and as a student as a professional. That's that's really um, Candy. She she mentioned in the chat that she had to go. She had some plans that she didn't uh, remember. But um, but uh, I think earlier in the chat I also said. Uh, uh, we, we were talking to him and said, we're trying to collect, uh, cultivate collective consciousness container. <laughs> and so like, uh, I, I liked all those C's was nice. Uh, so cultivating a collective consciousness container, that seems like the flavor of transpersonal psychology. Oh, that yes. We are collaborating together. Maybe collaboration is another C word that should go. In oh, with- that's one of the things I do. I am the key of collaboration and all that I do is partnership. So if you need help with that, that is not a problem. I'm that's definitely awesome. I would love good at connecting. Yes. I'd love that. So uh, are, are you in our uh, Facebook groups at all? Not at all. I try to stay off the computer. So, um, okay. <laughs> so I, I do so much. <laughs> I'm well, on your face, but I, but I'll check on, you know. <laughs> well, well, for for you and everyone else here, um, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm available. I'm help. I, I, okay. I resourceful, helpful as much as possible. You feel free to email me uh, anytime. T dot gray g r a y at sophia dot edu. Uh, I also work in the library. I also do just a variety of other things that I didn't have a chance to mention, but but thank you so much. Amaya. Thanks for the invitation. Thank you. And Eric. So let's see here. I'm Eric. Uh, I'm from upstate New York, kind of near the Corning area. If anyone knows where that is, or if you have Corel ware or anything, uh, mm-hmm. any of that really fancy baking ware, it was probably it was probably invented somewhere near where I live. Um, and let's see here, um, how I came to transpersonal psychology. Um, I worked at the Omega Institute, which is in Rhinebeck, New York for a heck of a long time. I think 14 years, practically. Um, I was part of their seasonal staff, uh, for most of my adult life. Now that I think about that, wow, that 
that's that's an interesting thing to contemplate um and uh it is a large uh transpersonal new age holistic retreat center in the northeast uh and itp uh back when when sophia was still called itp they used to have their uh east coast um uh co cohorts meet at omega the uh, founders of omega were quite close with nancy uh Rowe and some other uh folks from itp um and that's that's how i got here uh primarily the work that i do is i work as a life and relationship coach for people in polyamory and ethical non-monogamy uh and i'm a student of psychosynthesis as well awesome very cool thank you eric um i think beth uh stepped away for a second uh tracy Hi, I'm Tracy Schwartz, and um, let's see, um, I'm from Pittsburgh, and this is, I'm just uh, about completing my first year soon at um, at SU, and what brought me to Transpersonal? I guess, you know, I was, it's coincidence, right? I was listening to um, a talk on spirit science, actually, and it was from a transpersonal psychologist, and everything that she said, I was like, Oh my gosh, there's a name for this. <laughs> that's me. So that's how, how I discovered it. And then I just started um, researching schools and, and Sophia was called to me. So. Yeah, that, that, it's so cool how many people have that experience when they hear somebody <laughs> in the field speak about what the field is and they're like, oh yeah, me, me. You know, so, so many people are like that. I, I've been doing these um, spaces on Twitter uh, and I have uh, qu quite a few people that I'm uh, connected with on Twitter and I'm on like spiritual Twitter. So it's like a specific sort of conversation that's going on. And I I've been um, having these spaces where I'm just talking about what is transpersonal psychology. And um, so many people will get in there, uh, have never heard of it and was like, mm -hmm. oh, that, you know, this is already what I do. And um, that's really cool, Tracy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, how about Beth? Oh, hi there. Um, I'm Beth and I was actually here, but I was just eating an apple and I didn't think- No problem, no problem. Especially if I like to be eating on screen. So I turned my camera off, but no I'm so pleased to be here. And this is my my first attendance at this group. I don't know how long it's been going on. And I had gotten the email um, through Sophia and I am a, a new student there. Actually, I just finished the coaching certificate program um, and I'm starting the master's in counseling psychology in September. I'm very, very excited about that. Awesome. Um, uh, you know, professionally, it is a, I guess many people would think it's a change for me. Um, I actually have, you know, my, my background is kind of more basic, um, which is, you know, kind of business management and law. And for years, um, I've worked in human resources and labor relations, and I'm a director of a hospital in the Bay Area, uh, HR director of a hospital in the Bay Area. But um, I've also been an am political aspect, a political activist, uh, a maker of objects. Uh, uh, my, my whole thing in life is about the repair and transformation of the world and the connections between all of us. And I, uh, I've always felt I sort of come by it honestly because my uh, great grandfather was mystic who practiced Kabbalah, and nice. and he really sort of walked between the worlds, um, and uh, was an amazing man. Um, you know, it's interesting as an immigrant, he wasn't given much weight or value by the world. He just saw him as another guy who worked in a factory somehow, mm -hmm. but his life and all work is sacred and honorable. And, uh, and his vision was uh, just inspiring. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's something that's always, I think, been with me and my, my whole life, actually, um, you know, we sort of talk about the transpersonal. That's the I guess the thought process that I, I view the world, the lens I view the world with. And, uh, you know, even um, when I was very, very young, before I decided to professionally and educate myself in this direction, I've always uh, <coughs> been a reader and a studier of, of, of humanist, humanistic and other um, modern uh, schools of psychology. But also I just, uh, you know, I read like Otto Rank and I read Nietzsche and Jung, um, I'm a big fan of Becker and Yalom and I'm now Hollis. I've been reading some Hollis and 
Um, so I'm, I'm just enormously excited about all of this and, uh, and the learnings. And you know, frankly, when I saw this meeting, I wanted to be here because the other thing I know about this is you are all, even though I don't know you yet, you are my tribe. And um, you know, I find that my spirit is pulled to those who have the same, who, who seek to see the world and be in the world with the same spaciousness and bring presence to their relationship with others. So I'm enormously excited about it. And, um, and I thank you all so much. Just, I thank you all. And I look forward to getting you all, to getting to know you all in this community as time goes on. That, that's so awesome, Beth. I love hearing all of that. Um, you, you also, uh, oh, uh, two things that came to mind. One, Irving Yalom has really good, uh, um, like uh, kind of basics of therapy that I think every mm -hmm. uh, counselor should read. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think therapy is in the title, but I, I don't, uh, I don't remember right off head mm -hmm. um, uh, what it is, but I remember that that be, being a really impactful um, mm -hmm. book for me to read uh, during that master's degree in counseling psychology program. Um, it, you also gave me the thought that how it would be really cool to have you know, people going through these other programs, it would be really cool to have an alumni that you could connect with um, mm -hmm. just if you were interested in. Um, you sort of reminded me a bit of uh, one of my cohort members. Her name is Rena, and she lives in Palo Alto. Um, mm -hmm. She's a really amazing person. I think Eric agrees. Uh, uh, she, she's really cool and, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, already graduated the program. Maybe something, you know, there would just be something that could be helpful there. And that would be, that'd be awesome. I, uh, I think that they're working on the center of innovation and they're working on alumni, uh, reaching out to alumni and things mm -hmm. like this. Um, but, but thank you so much, Beth. Um, oh, thank you. And do you mind naming the title of that book in the chat? Um, yeah, so it, oh, it's called uh, The Gift of Therapy. Oh, there you go, Melissa. <laughs> uh, oh, she sent it to me direct. Oh, you guys are direct messaging me. Um, so yes, uh, the, the- It's a uh, fantastic book. It's a fantastic book. Yeah, yeah, it's called book. The Gift of Therapy. Uh, and I remember that right when Melissa also sent it. Uh, it is a fantastic book. It just has like, um, it just has like basic principles. And Irving Yalom is known more of a group psychologist, but mm -hmm. this for an individual um, therapist, it, it's amazing. I think it should be required reading. And I don't think it ever was in the MACP program. I think I just came, came across it. Um, I had uh, other uh, coworkers that I worked with in therapeutic spaces that I thought should have read it too. Um, it'd be awesome. Um, so uh, FF Collison, uh, mm -hmm. what, is, what is your name? <laughs> what is your actual name? Uh, hi, like hi. Here as well. Yeah, it's Faye. Faye. Oh, Fiona. Yeah, yeah short for Fiona. Fiona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, would you uh, like where, me to share? Where are you calling now? from? What brings yeah. you to transpersonal psychology? Yeah, so I'm calling from Queensland in Australia. You'll notice my accent. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm first year, well, nearly at the end of my first year at the MACP. Um, so, Beth, you'll love it. It's wonderful. Um, it was wonderful to hear you speak. Um, I had a really organic um, introduction to transpersonal psychology. Um, I've always been interested in the field and thought about studying. And every time I looked at degrees, I, I just couldn't come at them. Like I just found in Australia in particular, they're very um, cognitively based, head based. They don't bring in all, all the work across, you know, the somatic and, and transpersonal field. Um, and so that was kind of in the background. And then my father passed away and there was some really incredible and powerful experiences um, with the animal world around his death. And it just opened up, you know, I think when you have those seminal moments, you can either turn away and kind of just go, oh, yeah, that was that, or you can turn towards. And, and for me, it was a turning towards and a real desire to, it just kind of shook my world and really just opened up all the questions around interconnectivity across the universe and, and with um, human and non-human beings. Um, I also fell into, you know, um, incredible loss after he died and sought um, a counsellor and managed to find a counsellor that had studied the MATP at Sophia in Australia, with, in a little, like I lived in a little country town. She was half an hour away. It was just kind of meant to be. And the work I did with her was really um, transformational, you know, at the deepest level. And it really, you know, it just took me a long time of kind of resisting um, and kind of thinking I wasn't worthy of doing the work. and. Um, finally in COVID, you know, as it opened up so many um, questions for all of us, it really opened up the question for me. 
um, and I turned towards it in the end and then here I am. So absolutely loving the program um, and continue to evolve, you know, through the study and, and through all the work. So yeah, that, that, yeah. that's awesome, Fiona. The, you know, an MACP program really uh, gives you the opportunity to work on your stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, I think that makes us better therapists and facilitators in whatever capacity that we're doing this sort of healing work for others. And uh, really amazing. I, th I think you, you might be surprised to know that there is quite a bit of uh, transpersonal literature that comes out of Australia. Yeah, um, usually, right. usually in the, they, they speak a lot of, uh, more narrative, uh, literature, mm -hmm. but, um, mm -hmm. th th it is there. Uh, yeah. there, there's also a student, a PhD student, uh, named, uh, Diego, uh, and mm -hmm. he lives in Australia. Um, okay. and, uh, I know you guys are locked down tight right yeah. now. Oh, um, we're not in Queensland. We're not at all. It's Melbourne, oh, okay. I think down South, but yeah, yeah. 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 I'll, I'll have would to be... look him up. It would be really great for you guys to to connect. He's he's interested in um, psychedelic uh, sciences and uh, and and research. So um, if you're interested in those things and might, maybe other things that you could connect on in the transpersonal field, for yeah. sure. Do you um, know his surname, Travis Diego? Uh, it's like uh, p p it starts with a P. P. p Pinzo. P Pinzo. Okay. Uh, All uh, right. I can't remember exactly, but. Uh, if, if you're in our Facebook groups, uh, everybody uh, recommend uh, or recommend using the tools of uh, social media. I know that uh, the yeah. digital world is not great, um, but it does allow us to be connected across the seven seas. And um, there is a lot of uh, value like this. You know, we, we you know, in order to get a group of us, all of the same tribe, all of the things that people have said so far, um, a lot of similar um, ideas of how we were called to transpersonal psychology, which is really cool. So uh, we have a guest with us today. Um, I'm very honored to call him my friend, and I've uh, I've known him since uh, since like maybe late into my bachelor's completion program. So uh, that's something like seven years. Uh, he has uh, led shamanic journey circles at Sophia University. He used to do this uh, once a month, uh, has a lot of background in shamanic journeys, uh, also has on uh, shamanism in general, um, also has uh, done a lot of organizing for the transpersonal psychology conferences. Uh, I worked with him to uh, be a part of uh, being like the, uh, a spokesperson for Sophia. He, he himself was also, when we went to the Czech Republic International Transpersonal Psychology Conference in 2017, uh, we worked together for the Transpersonal Psychology Conference in Big Sur that was in 2019. Um, uh, a lot of work. Uh, he's also a board member at ATP. We work on the newsletter together. Uh, this is Dr. Steven Schmitz, and I'll uh, allow him to say what up. Great. <clears throat> well, thank you, Travis. I really appreciate you inviting me to this meeting, and I'm really happy to meet all of you who have joined this meeting. I think it's really important. I really also agree with some of the things that have been said about community and coming together and sharing and not being so isolated. So I'm really glad to see that Travis has started this group and that you're all a part of it. I was, I've been involved in transpersonal psychology for probably most of my life. I was, I was very young. I was raised Catholic and the, um, would you say the guardian angel wasn't a concept or an item of faith. It was an experience for me. And, you know, like most children, there wasn't really any space to share that. You, know, you couldn't go to your parents and certainly couldn't go to my friends. And the priests would probably write it off and explain it in a theological manner. So in 1974, I was fortunate to be initiated into both shamanism as well as Zazen and found a program at Sonoma State University in humanistic psychology and um, really spoke to me because I really wanted, I was interested, I'd been a counselor most of my life. I was really interested in doing counseling and the whole 
emphasis of clinical counseling on diagnosis and focusing on pathology really didn't speak to me. But humanistic did by bringing in you know, somatic work, by bringing in the mind-body connection, by bringing in, you know, what is a healthy human being? And I thought, wow, what a concept, you know. <laughs> if we want to help people be healthy, it'd be good to know what's a healthy human being, not just a pathological one. And of course, that connected me with transpersonal psychology. And so I've been involved with the field since the mid-70s. I currently have a private practice where I do shamanic counseling, shamanic healing, and spiritual guidance. I have a BA in humanistic psychology, and a master's, and a PhD in transpersonal psychology, both from the Institute of Transpersonal Psychology before it shifted into Sophia. I'm on the faculty, and I teach at transpersonal schools in the US, in Italy, in Latvia, and in the UK. I'm past president of ATP and currently still on the board, as Travis said, and the chair of the outreach committee, which is again, one of the reasons I'm here at this meeting to, to reach out to all of you. And my interest in being a part of this is not only to meet you and hear your stories, but also to find out from you how ATP, Association of Transpersonal Psychology, can be more supportive of you as you're going through the school, as you're graduating, and as you're moving into your profession. And as you know, uh, transpersonal psychology is not your conventional form of education within the field of psychology. And I remember when I came into ITP, people warned me against that, saying, well, if you get a PhD in, in transpersonal psychology, what are you going to do with it? You know, you won't be able to teach anywhere. And what I found is, you know, I'm currently teaching at five different schools, transpersonal schools internationally, and I've never applied for a teaching position. I've always been asked because of a PhD in transpersonal psychology. And um, I also do workshops around the world. So I have a lot of experience on a variety of different levels in transpersonal psychology. And I really can relate to a lot of what you were saying, all of you have saying what brought you to transpersonal. And for me, I remember when I first went to the orientation at ITP, the first meeting, I felt like I had come home. That like, wow, here's some people that speak the same language. And the things that I do are normal, <laughs> you know, not seen as you know, super, supernatural or off the wall or unconventional. They're just like, well, of course, we have had out-of-body experiences. Of course, we meditate. Of course, we do yoga. Doesn't everybody, you know, it's just that, that bless you, Shara. Um, you know, where it, the thing I like about transpersonal psychology is that it normalizes all these experiences that we have had. You know, I imagine or you wouldn't be at the school that you are. And sees the value and benefit of it and how it enhances, you know, everyday human life. And to me, that's what's really important that, you know, transpersonal psychology to me encompasses, is very inclusive. It encompasses all the aspects of psychology and it adds the spiritual dimension of human development and human nature. And to me, that's really important being a shamanic practitioner, as well as a transpersonal psychologist and a meditator, that aspect of human nature has always been really important to me. So I'm very happy to be here and join the group and um, contribute to the discussion. Thank you so much, Stephen, for being here. It's uh, awesome to have you here. You have a, a wealth of expertise and um, and uh, that, that is what this meeting is about, is about uh, ha having us work together in um, supporting each other for how we can uh, develop a, as a professional, have our impacts. Uh, really cool uh, that I, I hadn't heard Stephen say before uh, was that um, having a PhD in transpersonal psychology, teaching internationally at five schools, he had never applied for those positions, but rather was asked to be a part of those institutions. 
Um, and that comes from like the good natured soul that he has, that he has uh, continued to be um, uh, a contributor to the field uh, in, in terms of his uh, capacity to serve. And I think that there's, um, there's something really cool and deep about that lesson for all of us here. The only reason I, and, and I, I do see this as, I, I recognize that this is an opportunity that I'm leading this group right now. The only reason I have this opportunity or to know people like Steven or to know some of the other uh, members in this group to, know, to now have meet, met you all is because I have continued to say yes to things. I've continued hmm. to like, um, and, and, all, and, and not, not easily, not effortlessly. I wish, I wish it was more effortless, but, uh, um, you know, I've spread myself thin and, and really been stressed out in, in d at different times, uh, because of it, but I, I have no regrets for doing so. I, um, I, I think that there's something really beautiful and important about that as we're all developing ourselves in our professional capacities. So, um, uh, we're we're going to uh, begin to transition into the into this conversation. So we have uh, three topics of conversation, uh, three uh, questions, um, and I just invite anybody to uh, interject, uh, freely interject. I, you know, I wish we could sit and do a meditation before and then and then you know they kind of like ritualistically pull this apart, but you know, uh, there's time constraints, and so. Um, just, you know, uh, you, you, are, you are free to interject anytime. I tend to speak a lot and you can totally interrupt me. Uh, I have no problem with that. But um, the, the first question we, we tapped into a little bit. So like how were we called to transpersonal psychology starts to give us an idea of what transpersonal psychology means to us. Um, I had a conversation like this with students at an intensive seminar um, at Sophia before. And uh, it was just a, a student Senate meeting. Um, this is a part of what I do as well. Um, so uh, I, I, so we, we went around the room and, and got an idea of that. I, if, if anybody has uh, thought about this question or is thinking about that right now, what does transpersonal psychology mean to you? Um, I, I will first say that um, what, what I usually, my, my sort of elevator uh, pitch, and that, that was I've found uh, to be really important as a professional to have a good, succinct elevator pitch. I felt like Eric had a good one when he was speaking about um, the, the different things that he does. Uh, it's, it's, you know, developing that elevator pitch is really good. Uh, a piece of my elevator pitch is I always introduce myself I am Mr. Travis Gray. My vocation is as a transpersonal psychologist. I study the cultivation of whole human transformation, the investments of the whole being, body, mind, soul. And I know so much about leaning into my narrative it, in that elevator speech. I know how my hands move. I know, um, usually I know like how I am presenting when I'm saying those things. Um, but that is what transpersonal psychology means to me. It's a it's a field that is uh, for the purpose of studying the, the cultivation of the ultimate nature of a human being. What, how, how, can a, how can an individual, how can a person become an individual at their highest capacity? Something that might be aligned with their soul nature. When you think about soul, soul to me is your highest, it's your ideal self in, in some ways, but in some other ways it's sort of beyond your ideal self. You, you sort of um, can't quite get there, but, but it's, it's this capacity to be your best version of yourself. These are things that uh, some of those founding fathers were interested in. Abraham Maslow was known to be very interested in, the, in studying uh, human beings that live successful lives and then using that as, as the as the grounds for how are we going to help others also live successful lives. That's uh, in, in some way, that is what we are looking to do. So, um, so that, that's what transpersonal psychology means to me. I, I, I would say one other thing is that I like when you take apart the etymology of these words, it is uh, the study of the psyche, the study of the soul uh, and transpersonal is like transcending or moving beyond the personal, the ego. So it's sort of like the study of the soul transforming the ego. And, and I think that that's also a beautiful way to 
uh, define transpersonal psychology. This field is notorious for being um, sort of ambivalent, uh, not having not having super concrete definitions because um, we a lot of times we are pointing towards uh, something that uh, cannot be adequately grasped, uh, the ineffable, and so. Um, so yeah, uh, that's what that's what transpersonal psychology means to me. Uh, what does it mean to any of you? Um, I'm I'm a newbie, but you know, just from the little I know, and again, I don't have the uh, theoretic grounding yet that others in this room do. But you know, to me, um, moving towards the study of transpersonal psychology, it's about embracing the unknown, and only by leaping forward and moving into that unknown? Do we get past the narrow constraints that are uh, sort of thrown on us it's, to quote, be successful, which is really a narrowing, a squeezing of ourselves and of other people, seeing ourselves narrowly, seeing other people narrowly. Transpersonal is seeing ourselves connected to that much greater whole and stepping into the places that can be scary and embracing them and knowing that you know, for all of us, um, the places that we might see ourselves as broken, well, it's not that it's broken, it's the places where we have an opportunity to open hmm. and understand more about ourselves and what's basically human and connected to other people. Um, I, you know, one of the reasons that I uh, sort of came towards uh, Sophia um, and, and it incorporates the Institute for Transpersonal Psychology is for many years, I had a very dear friend who's no longer on earth with us, Sonia Margulius. And, you know, she would laugh and she would say, you know, all these things that happened to us, all the things that we love, all the things that we hate, all the things that are so painful, the things we're ashamed of, it's all part of that human experience and embrace it in yourself and be open to it in others and just laugh every single day be a part of all that is. So for me, it's part of moving towards all of this and that, that connection and developing that awareness. That's awesome. So um, one of the things that comes to my mind when we talk about the transpersonal, uh, one of my psychosynthesis te uh, teachers uh, said this the other day and it really stuck with me is that well, another way of thinking of the the root of trans is that it also means to go through. So we are going through the personal. In psychosynthesis, they divide the experience of psychosynthesis into both the personal and then the transpersonal. You have to have the foundation and the strengthening of the ego. Uh, a lot of traditions talk about you know you need to get rid of the ego, but in the in a psychological uh, since you need a strong ego to be able to do many of the spiritual and transpersonal things, or you start to fall into spiritual bypass or other issues where your psyche starts to uh, disintegrate around mm. uh, the spiritual practice. Um, and um, so to me, it also feels like there, yeah, as you were saying, there's that higher self, it's that transcendent and imminent self, it is that piece of us that is always above us, but always constantly with us at the same time, that is calling us to move towards this higher place. And transpersonal psychology is just a way of helping people find maps for themselves to move along that journey. I saw a lot of other people uh, really resonated with that too, Eric. I, I, I like the idea of um, uh, the development of maps. I think in you know in psychosynthesis, uh, it's very clear that um, Asajoli uh, left open that invitation to continue to develop the map of psychosynthesis. Um, if uh, if anybody doesn't know about Roberto Asajoli and the work of psychosynthesis, it's really beautiful work, uh, beautiful philosophy in itself. And um, there's some interventions that can really be um, held and, and utilized in, in therapeutic practice. So yeah, thank you, Eric. Um, does anybody else want to take a stab at what transpersonal psychology means to you? Cool. 
All right. Um, so uh, I'd like to know may, maybe um, maybe this will be uh, 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 be more requiring um, uh, pe people to, to to let us know. But the the second question is, what are your interests in the field of transpersonal psychology? We heard some of that in that initial question. Um, psychosynthesis being one of them, counseling psychology. Um, we we heard like. Uh, uh, men's health, polyamory. Um, oh, uh, I, I'll say on that subject of uh, polyamory also, Eric, is that, um, um, and moving beyond even, uh, 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 Stephen and I work with the, the outreach committee and we're working on the newsletter right now uh, for the summer newsletter um, for the ATP community. So I, I, I didn't hear Stephen say this, but everybody can become a student member of the Association of Transpersonal Psychology. You will get access to all of the, all of the previous published works in the journal and um, all of that is, uh, is really awesome. But there's also this opportunity to see a, a prolific scholar uh, of transpersonal psychology speak um, last month, uh, we had uh, Stanley Krippner uh, speak uh, about a newly uh, co-published work that was really awesome. Um, but um, in July, we have Jorge Ferrer um, speaking about his ideas um, in, that, in that same uh, sort of subject matter. And I think he has some really brilliant uh, forward thinking ideas about love and um, uh, and it's really awesome. He will be speaking uh, uh, in a format just like this uh, in a forum, an ATP forum meeting. Um, is that the second Saturday of July, Stephen? Second Saturday of every month, we have an ATP forum. And I invite someone from the transpersonal field to give a presentation. We're having one this Saturday. If you're interested, you can come and see it is with Dr. Jenny Wade, that you may have heard of her. She's one who's kind of made famous for the book Transcendent Sex, um, which just happened to be one of the largest draw of the book signings that we had at ITP many years ago. And she'll be talking about battle trance and how you know the ancient warriors kind of work themselves up into a trance before they went into battle because battle was hand-to-hand -hand comment, very scary. But they also had, you know, she talks about the ritual to get hyped up for that, but she also talks about when they came back, there's a ritual to then, in a sense, debrief and re-enter our, you know, their village or tribe, whatever. And it's something that's sorely missing, as you know, with the U.S. veterans we have now, they come back from, you know, the 24 hour, seven day a week being on and watching out so you might get killed to coming home and there's no kind of transition ritual. There's no rite of passage. So like you're no longer in war, you're back home. So I think it'll be a very interesting topic that she'll be talking on. And they happen the second Saturday of each month from 12 noon till 1 30 p.m usually about half of that time is with a presenter and then the other half is dialogue that we really like to get people to contribute to the dialogue ask questions of the speaker and the information you can either um, if you go on the atp website under events it has the zoom link to join us if you want to join us on Saturday. And please join us if you're interested. So I just put in the chat, that's atpweb.org. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. And thank, well, put in HTPS colon backslash backslash that. Otherwise, it won't be secure. So thank you for bringing that up, Travis. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I really have enjoyed those forums. Uh, it is another, I'm always open to these opportunities to network with other people, obviously with this. Um, but um, so it could, it could potentially be that opportunity for you to network with others, but um, it's also an opportunity to see somebody that is uh, a professional working in the field 
um, giving a presentation, maybe they um, maybe that's an opportunity for them to practice their presentation before they take it to like a conference, um, things like this. This is uh, this is often um, how uh, people practice in the field that uh, they'll have their presentation, they take it to a conference, or they. Um, Rick Doblin uh, did this at the um, at the last uh, transpersonal psychology conference. He had sort of a presentation that he. Um, in some way, he practiced it. He, he gave it, genuinely gave it, but he in some way practiced it. Uh, this was uh, just for me observing, noticing this, uh, was that he practiced um, his presentation. Rick Doblin is the founder of MAPS, uh, the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies. And so he uh, practiced his presentation in front of the transpersonal psychology community. And then in the following weekend or the following couple weekends, uh, he had a more uh, a bigger event that was more directed to his subject matter, and then it was the opportunity for him to have polished up anything that he needed to, and then present that again like a practice thing. So um, some of these scholars having an opportunity to present uh, their work, uh, battle trance, like just an awesome uh, subject matter that oh, transpersonal psychology can go there too. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it can go to so many areas, which is super cool. Um, and it, uh, it, it, it opportunities like that also give them um, this uh, this space where they can let people know about you know published works that might be coming out, um, like Stanley Kripner did last month. Jorge Ferrer will be doing that. Um, Jenny Wade, I, I was trying to remember where did I hear this name, Jenny Wade, and um, because my uh, one of uh, one of the members of my uh, dissertation committee. Um, his name is Dr. Nick Fortino. He's my content expert. And um, he told me that his, his dissertation was chaired by Jenny Wade. And I was like, where have I heard that name before? And it was from Stephen uh, about, about that coming up. So, uh, so that's really cool. So then, you know, that's more of this community being connected in the way that it is. And um, so that's, that's really beautiful. Uh, so, um, in anybody else, what are what are your interests in the field of transpersonal psychology? I guess uh, a part of that question, and maybe uh, going into that next question, the next question is where do you need support in the field of transpersonal psychology? Um, we're interested in a discussion about like wh wh where do you want to be impactful in this field, or or how do you want to apply this field to your communities or um, or, you know, the, uh, the population that you're aiming to serve or uh, things like this, in, in what ways uh, maybe, um, you know, may, maybe you have an idea of like uh, some, some different interests. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you guys think those are? M Melissa, you're welcome to throw it in the chat if you'd like. <laughs> Anybody I else? think that's a, a really okay. interesting question. I'm going to jump in. I'm oh, sorry, Nambaya, you clicked on as well. Yeah, um, yeah. I just want to thank you for putting this together because um, I feel, you know, when Stephen started speaking, and that's exactly where I have fallen in being, I work at a community college in health and wellness. And after completing the master's degree, I really had an illusion <laughs> that I could come back and be impactful um, within the community college circuit and share um, with my colleagues and so forth. I, at the time, was uh, the developer of programming for employee wellness. And um, what I found is that it was like there's a gap, as you were kind of speaking, that I couldn't get hired in the psychology department because they didn't see that this degree met their narrow-minded um, <laughs> uh, where they last. So that didn't happen. And then in health and wellness, it fits absolutely beautifully um, with um, you know, 10 dimensions of wellness that we, that we preach. And one of those dimensions is spiritual. Yet the only aspect of that they're willing to speak to is, well, nature is spiritual. We can't talk about anything else. So, um, so it's been challenging. And so um, I'm just finding as we're dialoguing how much I miss having uh, colleagues that we can 
break this apart and have conversations. So I'm recognizing that having been away from Sophia and anybody in my world that talks about transpersonal psychology, um, that it's really been um, a gap. And I look at my bookshelf and I keep talking to my books <laughs> saying, <laughs> you know, one day I'm gonna start pulling every one of these books off my shelf because they make my heart sing. Yet mm -hmm. during the time I was in school, I was, it was one of the most extraordinary, busiest times and chapters of my life. Um, caring for my mom and, uh, you know, growing children and, and everything. So I never really got to chew and really, um, you know, massage the content in all of the, the texts that I have sitting on that bookshelf. And so when you ask the question, you know, how do you want to serve? Um, I've really been, I'm constantly asking that question. And it feels like I need to take this huge leap of faith at some point soon and break away from any of the constructs of this, um, you know, this job that I have that doesn't serve, but it's secure and it still provides health insurance <laughs> for myself. Um, to be able to really answer that question, to say, what is it that, how can I serve in knowing the knowing that I know mm -hmm. um, from that place of spirit always talking through me? And um, it's, it's hitting more of a pinnacle because of COVID, because I've had so much more time to be in nature and to really ask questions and to begin writing again. Mm -hmm. And so for those of you that are newer in the program, um, I have found that a place where I can go is back to that writing because we write so much in the program um, mm -hmm. from just your own personal narrative to the <laughs> studies that we do. So right now, um, for myself, I'm going back to those writings and it's just extraordinary. And I look at it and I go, okay, who came through me? <laughs> who, what came through me that was writing this? And that is the deep place that I want to share. So I mm -hmm. want to share that writing, that spirit's coming through, through the work I did under this umbrella called transpersonal psychology. Yet I can it's interesting to be on this call because I can, I haven't said the word transpersonal psychology in probably two years because <laughs> nobody can hear it. Wow. And when I say it, and when I used to say it, I was so proud. Oh my gosh, I got my master's degree. I'm so proud of myself. No one could hear it. So after a while, it was like, why do I even say it if nobody can hear it? So this is really um, a wonderful opportunity to to bring it forward again. And thank you, Travis. Thank you, Stephen, for being here. And I most certainly will um, start coming to these meetings and, and coming to the Saturday gatherings and begin to feel that, that um, the weaving of this and how it, how it weaves into our, our lives and through our communities. So, yeah, we, and Eric- yeah, And if, like, if, you, yeah, if you like, if you like to write, I would encourage you to think about submitting a manuscript to the Journal of Transpersonal Psychology. And, you know, think about something, a particular niche, grab some of the books off your, you know, your shelf and do a scholarly paper like you have done in your, you know, already and submit it to uh, Marcy to, be considered to be published in the journal of transpersonal psychology because that is one way you can contribute you have a lot you have a large readership for the journal of transpersonal psychology and all those people will know what the word transpersonal psychology means the people that read the journal mm -hmm. the other thing you might consider because you were asking how can you contribute there was a recent um article by roger walsh uh, something about how can i contribute so you might want to look on his um, website, and it was um, 
an article kind of written based on a speech he gave. And it's a really good way to, you know, contribute from a transpersonal uh, standpoint or perspective. And where do I find Roger Walsh? I didn't. Where do I find Pardon? that? Where do oh, I find? Oh, just just go on to Google Roger Walsh. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah. Google from Eric. Thank you, Eric. Oh, <laughs> there it is. is uh, so I, I I found like similar thing that Eric just found too. I think we were we we were busting on the on the keyboard at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> both work in libraries. Woo right. Yeah. Yeah. We both work in libraries. <laughs> Um, but that that is an audio about how can, uh, it says how can we best help but yeah there is something about uh contributing effectively in times of crisis yes Th there are things to to look at for sure thank you steve thank you. you're welcome um i i i would also include uh, uh this a uh, bit for you lisa is that um uh, i I would, I would go back to like what, what eric said about um, about what uh, transpersonal psychology means to, to him. At the end, he talked about maps. Um, that's really been uh, fascinating and important for me also. And um, I've worked with uh, coaches that are sort of uh, early on developing their practice as a holistic coach and things. Um, I have one friend in Canada uh, that does this. And I spoke with her about, um, about her narrative, leaning into her narrative in some way. I'm the host now. Okay, something happened. So, um, and, uh, and, uh, bye. Uh, um, Eric's got to go, maybe. No, Fee left and I was saying goodbye to her. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's probably very late in Australia or something, but, um, but, uh, but I, I would, I would reflect back on that maps thing. And, uh, that's always been inspiring for me in the field of transpersonal psychology is that we need more, um, effective frameworks and maps uh, that we can use. And um, I think that when you take those 10 dimension, you know, uh, combining with your narrative as a person, as a scholar, as your interests, as Lisa, I, I would look up what, do, what is a Lisa? Well, what does a Lisa mean? Maybe you already know, um, but uh, I'd lean into that. And then that, that becomes a part of like your marketing. It becomes a part of the platform um, that creates something. And then, and then those 10 dimensions of the information that you know uh, from, from your current job, um, and, and they're saying, oh, nature is spiritual. Well, well um, maybe you can write something about how, how the spirituality applies to those other 10 dimensions. And then you start, you start to build a map uh, of your own, of uh, holistic, of wellness, and um, and, and in, in like, uh, like Stephen is saying, uh, being published in a journal that adds to your CV, that allows you maybe the opportunity uh, once again to work with the community colleges um, if, you're, if you're still interested in that. Uh, the chair of my, uh, or uh, uh, one of my uh, dissertation committee members uh, works at community colleges and, uh, um, you know, he, he's, he, I, I asked him about teaching opportunities. How do I, how do I develop myself as a teacher so that I can get these opportunities to teach at institutions as well? Um, things like this. So, uh, it's all awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing you might I'd suggest you might do Lisa <clears throat> is, you know, as you were speaking, I kind of heard a little bit, you know, look at, do some shadow work within yourself to any kind of resistance you have about coming out as a transpersonal psychologist, you know? And what I mean by that is that, you know, this, this conversation, oh, well, a lot of people don't understand me or, you know, that people will look at me funny or all that stuff to really work that through within yourself. And, you know, like Travis mentioned earlier, <clears throat> have an elevator speech when people say, Oh, transpersonal psychology, never heard of that. What is that? And I found many times, because I have done a lot of international traveling in workshop, leading workshops, I travel a lot and I'll meet someone that's sitting next to me on a plane, maybe get in a conversation, and they ask me what I do, and I say, I'm a transpersonal psychologist, and they go, oh, what's that? And I give them a brief little explanation, you know, nothing really intense or a lot of theory just a very simple description of what transpersonal psychology is 
And I have never had anyone go, ooh, that's weird. It's usually, really? There's a field of psychology that looks at that and talks about it? Wow. And we have this great conversation. And part of it is, you know, working it out within yourself because, you know, and I found that was really helpful when I was doing my PhD. My PhD was taking people that have no shamanic background whatsoever and teaching them how to do the shamanic journey. And, you know, I had quite a few colleagues saying, oh, you don't want to do that. That's dangerous and this and that. But, you know, obviously people haven't done shamanic journeying. And at that point, I'd been doing it for about 40 years. So I knew that it wasn't dangerous or it doesn't have to be, excuse me. With a proper teacher and proper training, it can be really beneficial. But one of the things that stood out in relation to what you're saying is that when I was talking to Jim Fadiman at ITP, I said, well, you know, it's kind of a bizarre thing. And he goes, wait a minute, Stephen, if you think it's bizarre, what are other people going to think when you talk to them? Work, go in yourself and work that through. This isn't bizarre. This is deep, transformative, and beneficial work. And be able to, you know, not just gloss over it or deny it, but really come to terms with that within yourself and work it through. And it was very helpful for me, you know, and I actually did complete the degree. and you know, of course, helped me in uh, my career. So I just, you know, just an offer is one of the things that, you know, because transpersonal isn't about making it bad or pathological. It's about, somebody mentioned earlier, it's an opportunity, you know, an opportunity for growth. And so if you have some resistance to just, you know, speaking of it like matter of factly, then I would suggest and encourage you to work with that so that you can speak of it just like you would any other profession and you feel confident and you feel proud of it you know so that people because people pick that up right and be really confident that yeah this is something of value mm -hmm. and that will come across in your presentation and your explanation so yeah, good fortune in that <laughs> great thank you <laughs> That, that little note that you mentioned, uh, Stephen, with the oper the, somebody else said it was an opportunity. They said it's an opportunity to open up. And oftentimes when you speak uh, with somebody else about this and they've never heard it, they, they know, they hear that as an opportunity to open up. And um, you do get into deep conversations. I had years of uh, Uber rides where I was, <laughs> where people are asking me what I do. And I'm, and I'm, t I'm trying to come up with a definition over those early year, early rides. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, some people want the full, they, they want some detail. Oh, what is that? You know, define that. Some people want that. And if they just want, uh, oh, I, I'm a spiritual psychologist or I'm just a psychologist sometimes that as well. But, uh, um, but yeah, I, I love everything that Steven said. I, I hope that's really helpful for you. Lisa. Very helpful. Yeah. Uh, so N N Numbia, you, you had, uh, you had almost spoke earlier. What, what, uh, what, what are your interests in the field? What, how, how, how do you need support in the field of transpersonal psychology as well? One, um, just listen to everybody. Thank you. I, I think you doing what you're doing is is a great support. Actually, this is the first group in the years of me being in the psychology field, you know, so like this. So thank you for the invitation. That's I'm, that that means something for me. It's, you know, so I'm not a part of too many groups. Um, but I would say first with with trans transpersonal psychology, all of what you guys say is important, but um, not not but I look at it as Transpersonal psychology is supreme wisdom, and hmm. it brings you to a place of knowledge of self, and um, it connects you to be more happier, more at peace of mind, helps you with your mind, body, and spirit, and your heart. It complements your wellness, your total well-being, and when the sister just said, Miss Lisa, when the sister just said, uh, spoke about the 10 dimensions, 
sister, I was just on that because I was just re revisiting some books, you know, just revisiting some things and just seeing how that connects. And with 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 the with the men I work with, or just with the community people that I work with, primarily um, all the language when you're just speaking like in the the academic term, I think transpersonal psychology just removes me from that because I'm speaking to people that all that would just be all over their head. And I just get real. And that's what transpersonal psychology does for me in my practice. With the men that I work with, just hearing psychology, hearing therapy, they don't want to hear none of that mm -hmm. as far as the, the terms, you know, right? But when I'm just clear, it, they appreciate that. So I think transpersonal psychology brings you to a place of appreciation you know, for one another. For women, for me, it embraces my femininity, um, you know, for me to receive, express, and, and execute, you know, the spirit within myself and to appreciate the spirit in others. And for men, I appreciate how their natural role may be to um, be a provider, maintain a protector, and to connect that. So I think it's overall, it's like, it's the supreme wisdom that knowledge itself, you know, and that's what really helps. I think the support I would need is just being welcome. Um, as far as in the field of psychology, it supports mental health with these terms, mental health. And when I'm speaking to certain populations, the more authentic I am, the more they can receive. You know, when it goes into the academic language when I'm dealing with just people, it's like, okay, yeah, whatever, you know, I'm just saying with, with my experience. So when I'm just authentic, they appreciate it, reduces conflict, you know, and raises more positive connections. Yeah, that, that, that's awesome. Um, I, I, the, the more that I hear you speaking about men's health, did we meet before? I wonder. <laughs> I, I, th I think we might have met. I, I don't know if it was online or in person, or uh, I think we met once. Did you used to teach a class with at, at Sophia? Mm -mm. Did you ever teach a class? There? I never taught a class. No, just a student. But maybe we were co maybe we were classmates or something. But uh, I, I I did love uh, everything that you said as well. Um, it it is. Uh, it, it is interesting, it, you know, th this kind of uh, brought us back to a similar idea with Lisa that, um, you know, what is, what is the, how, how, do, how do we articulate, how do we speak to a non-academic audience? You know, how, how do we speak to people in a way that they will authentically receive this, uh, be honored, appreciated for it, seen for it? I think in that and that male, that men's work that you're doing, um, you probably have seen a lot of vi value and transformation in, in other men for just being seen, just being appreciated um, in that way, which is, uh, uh, which is amazing. Um, I, I heard you say something like uh, uh, being supported, being uh, welcomed. Um, you know, uh, th th there is... Um, I, I've I've been uh, I've uh, been happy and uh, blessed to have the opportunity to have a very diverse masters group. Um, so uh, out of ten students, we had two from India, one from South Africa, Italy, Spain, Canada, um, and then uh, maybe a few places in America. So we had just a variety of diversity. Um, in a conversation just Tuesday, uh, Stephen, myself, and uh, George Harold, Doctor. Uh, Dr. Harrison, is that George Harold Jennings? Jennings. Jennings. So, Jennings. Uh, I was just looking at Sari's last name, so, <laughs> so Jennings. Um, so uh, Dr. Jennings, um, we we had a conversation about uh, diversity and wanting to bring more diversity into the field, into uh, the academic published work. Uh, really important that we get more published work from um, from a diverse uh, population of researchers. Um, so, you know, you, you'd be more, more than welcomed and, uh, uh, and, and appreciated for, for, for that. Um, yeah, I, I guess that's, that's all I wanted to say there. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, well, 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 thank you. Um, um I, I've got to go in 10 minutes or so. So just real quick, the, the space that I feel like I could use some support is yeah. 
I'm been trying to figure out if I want to go. Uh, so I graduated last June with the uh, master's in transpersonal psych, the non-clinical degree. Uh, and I've been like, do I want to go back for a clinical degree? And I've been struggling uh, finding places in the US that uh, I can apply for student uh, financial aid because so, so for a clinical program, Sophia, uh, if I'm a resident of New York, can will not uh, it will can't do so uh, financial aid for me. And I so like at the moment, it seems like Saybrook is the only place. Does anyone in general know of other uh, institutions Naropa? that New York is like? Yes, you can go there. Naropa. Uh, Naropa. Uh, I I'll check Naropa's program. Yes, so, thank so you. So there's a there's a student that I know in the master's degree. Uh, I think she started MATP, but she wanted more of a clinical program. She just mm -hmm. didn't, didn't quite get the right direction, um, and uh, she had the same issues of being in New York um, and not having the right accreditation or, or what have you. So. Um, she went to Naropa and there was a program there that mm -hmm. um, did have transpersonal in the title. Um, and she felt that she was, uh, I, I still speak with her. She, she felt that she was sort of like uh, ahead of the curve in terms of knowing what transpersonal psychology is. I imagine mm -hmm. you will be the same, Eric. And um, uh, that, so, so that's great. That, that's also an opportunity to, um, you know, to, you know, inspire the other students on mm -hmm. what it what it means to actually have transpersonal psychology not just in the title of your program but um, yeah it actually involves and brings uh, the value that it brings to the program True. Oh, Melissa went to Naropa she has an MA in clinical mental health counseling concentration in transpersonal mindful counseling yeah I, nice. I think that that might be the same program that uh, um, that the friend that I'm speaking about was in mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm looking at Naropa. Uh, yeah, I was like, I've been like, do I want to go for another master's or do I want to go for a, a, a see if I can just go for a doctorate, uh, either a PhD or a PsyD instead. So that's because I'm like, it, it took me three and a half years to finish my uh, master's anyway. So I'm like, if I do another master's and then I decide I want to do a PhD, I'm going to be in my 60s or 70s by the time I managed to finish it all. So makes no difference, Eric. I got mm -hmm. went back to get my PhD at 51, 51, yeah. and I'm glad I did because I brought many years of experience out in the field mm -hmm. to the PhD. I'm mm -hmm. very grateful I didn't try and do it right after my master's and you know at, in the mid 20s because I didn't mm -hmm. know anything. And uh, it was very helpful to actually have the you know experience and clinics and centers mm -hmm. and all the different teaching and things I've done when I went back to get the PhD. Mm. And the PhD will open doors you can't even imagine. Seriously, mm -hmm. that's well, one of the reasons I'm teaching where I am is because of the PhD, not because I had a master's. Mm -hmm. And it does take a lot of effort, a lot of time. Um, it will overtake your life and mm -hmm. it'll be very expensive. And even with all that, I found it's definitely, I have no regrets. I think it's definitely worth every bit of energy and effort and, you know, all the money I put into it because of the doors that it can open. It puts you in a, a special group of people. You know, I remember the uh, president of ITP at the time when I was graduating was saying that, there's only something like two or three percent of people that start PhD programs actually complete. Mm, wow. And so, and the other thing too, it will make you, by the time you finish your dissertation, believe me, you will be a world expert on that topic. And that's, you know, very valuable if you, you know, to contribute to your career, mm -hmm. assuming that's, you know, why you want to do it. But it really will add. It'll add some confidence. It'll add um, acceptance. It'll add an expertise that I think is well worth it. If that's what you want to do, I mean, I don't think a PhD program is for everybody. Mm -hmm. It is very intense, and I think there's some real value if that's what you're drawn to doing. 
and you know like rumi says you know think big mm -hmm. don't look at the small picture <laughs> <laughs> well, and that uh, it's a music. It, that's the interesting thing. That's what I've been working with my therapist on is the desire to play small with most of my life. So, uh, okay. and so that's where I'm like, is am I jumping the ship a little too soon, or is this uh, the is this that call? So that's part of what we're exploring in all of that. So, oh, you're, good. you're never you're never jumping the ship too soon because the tide is going to take you to where you need to go. <laughs> thank you you'll be, you'll be perfectly fine um, this was great everyone thank you so much yeah, yeah I, thank I, you for I, your I contribution include, uh, eric uh the, the so the, the phd or a PsyD program if you're wanting uh you know it, it seems like you're interested in research and then the application of applying your, your psychosynthesis work well um well, the PhD program is going to be more of that research uh, based side. We'll give you the clinical expertise, but that will be you, you'll be uh, lined up to be more of a diagnosing sort of person, a more testing intelligence testing person, um, which is fine. You make a lot of good money that way. Um, but uh, but I think. I think uh, the the only benefit is like you're you can say you, you you can have this different name like you can call yourself a licensed psychologist. Um, you're you're testing and diagnosing people, and uh, you can take insurance. But if the development of your your business um, isn't necessarily in that direction, um, and you're interested in the research applying the psychosynthesis. Getting into a doctoral and program teaching. itself will be a part of your your synthesizing, and then yeah, t uh, teaching for for either of those degrees, teaching is is great. Yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I look forward to the next time we do this. For sure. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, how about uh, Tracy? Do you have anything? You know, my mom's name is Tracy. Yeah, I was I mentioned that to you before. No, I was just thinking, I mean, I think because I'm still in my first year, I'm not, I, I'm really on a leap of faith here. I don't really know exactly what direction I'm going to go. I know I'm, I'm going to um, get a, a focus on, on coaching. Um, and I'm, I'm, my talent is writing. So I'm, I'll probably somehow work those things together. But I don't really know yet. <laughs> so I didn't have much to contribute. That's why I didn't jump in. <laughs> oh, you, yeah, I'm sure you have a lot to contribute, but um, what, what uh, your first year in what, which program? It, um, in the, the master's, global master's program. Or TP. Yeah, of, of transpersonal psychology. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Uh, yeah the uh, coaching, developing a, a coaching practice. Um, I think one thing that if, if I were to do anything different during my master's degree or previous years, I would say start developing your business structure right now. Uh, you, there is, there's no need to wait. There's no need to, you know, wait until it's the right time to jump ship. Like Eric was saying, um, I, th I think develop your business right now. And um, along the way, you will, it, you'll, you'll just have a lot of, it'll be a lot more valuable um, during that unfolding process of you developing that business. Um, yeah, that, that, that's a suggestion that I would give you there. Yeah, thank you, that's good. Cool, so um, great. Well, uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna kind of like uh, take apart our meeting and uh, I, I took a bunch of notes and interests and things um, and we'll have a, a, a little bit different theme, maybe uh, sort of different questions and um, We'll, we'll, we'll see for the next one. We're, we're going to keep doing these uh, through the summer, uh, twice a month. Um, and uh, thank you so much for everybody joining. Uh, you all had a lot of uh, th great things to contribute. Um, thank you. And as I said earlier, if you want to join us for a dialogue this Saturday, if you're available, just go on the ATP website and look under events. And um, you know, if you're not a member of ATP, consider the possibility of being a student member and being a part of the oldest professional transpersonal association that is in the world. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks, well, thank you, Travis.
thank you for inviting me and thank yeah. you all of you for your contributions it's very helpful for me thank you thank so you. much Stephen. you're a wealth of wisdom and uh, we needed you here <laughs> okay bye guys thank you.